Good afternoon, book lovers of the internet. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe because for every subscriber, I get a new subscriber and I also read a page from a book of my choice. So in today's video, I am going to be reviewing Tender is the Flesh by Agustina Basterica. You might have heard of this before. I'm pretty sure that one of you mentioned it in one of my live streams. This is translated very well, in my opinion, uh, from this Spanish by Sara Moses. I rated it 4 out of 5 stars and it has about 220 pages. So I read this in one sitting and technically one shitting too since I do read on the porcelain throne. And my first impression was that PETA, you probably know what PETA is, the organization who makes sure that animals are treated well um, and tries to create a sort of revolution, PETA would have a field day with this novel, since humans are bred and raised in captivity to feed others. So this was basically just another tale of dehumanization, desensitization, and the government manipulating society in order to eliminate overpopulation. So a couple of days ago, I read The Machine Stops by E.M. Forster, and in a way there are themes which are very similar. Um, though this one was rather horrifying, and it is one which is probably permanently edged into my brain. So the government um, makes up the idea that animals are no longer fit for consumption because of a disease, and therefore starts to raise and breed humans to feed humans. So essentially just cannibalism all the way to remove overpopulation. So yeah, the government's manipulation makes this a dystopian book, and you probably know how much I love books which fall under the category of dystopian. So I felt as though this was a very powerful read and made me feel as though such a trajectory for our species is not too far-fetched, which is also quite terrifying to think about that it came across as rather realistic in a way. Um, which is why it was more sickening. So I, I do love reading novels that fall under the dystopian genre, and this did not disappoint, though I thought of uh, Marcos. Yeah, Marcos, um, who is the protagonist, the main character, as a better man. So the twist towards the end was absolutely sickening. I will not be spoiling anything here. Um, you completely have to understand the character development in order to see that Marcos is overall a horrible person who isn't any better than the others despite us being the impression being given the impression that he is throughout so i still don't understand how it is so insanely simple for a government to brainwash an entire society and not have anyone rebel so in a way this is also a political satire sort of read if you really look into it and also a warning as to what we might experience in just a couple of years if we're not careful if we allow for the government to manipulate us in any way they can possibly conceive so fear is as it has always been and this isn't something that we can ignore fear is a very powerful tool so you also should be aware so this is a heads up when reading the book um, that there are themes of animal cruelty and not just the humans being treated as animals, but also the animals themselves. Um, there are some puppies who are abused, unfortunately, and that was very horrible to see. And the puppies were never revenged in any way, which is something I am completely pissed about. Probably one of the reasons why I didn't give this one five stars. There were a couple of loose ends. So, yeah, madness in this book is treated as a motivator rather than a reason to be eliminated. Madness is almost... Uh, congratulated in such a society. So this read once more how highlighted how words hold so much power and how with the proper connotation people can be led to do anything and absolutely everything. So with labeling human meat differently, labeling it as, as special meat, humans cannibalize each other without any sense of remorse. And yeah, it's very troubling, very disturbing and will probably give me nightmares later on today. Um, so cannibalism is, of course, rather disgusting, and I hope you think so as well, since I think that I have an audience who is mostly sane. So it is it is normalized in this novel, and in certain cases, the dehumanization of people is extremely concerning, and it is taken too far. The shock factor is used brilliantly here, and um, I wouldn't compare it to the way shock factor is used in the play by Sarah Kane, for instance, called Blasted. 
um, it is used perfectly here and it serves as a brilliant warning. So I do think that the translation is also brilliant and conveyed the message very well. So I did think more highly of Marcos, to be quite honest, and I was utterly disappointed by the way the story ended so abruptly and shockingly. So as I mentioned, this was a very quick read, not only because I couldn't put it down, but also because of the, the way it is written. The chapters are short, it is split into two parts, and um, I wanted to see how it would play out. So yeah, there was a lot of suspense with regard to what would happen, as, as you probably know, and this is what kept me intrigued for the most part, which is why I read it in only a couple of hours. So it was very thought-provoking and eye-opening with regard to how humans treat animals prior to consumption. So we can already see this happening to animals, uh, pigs, cows, chickens, that sort of thing. So it is enough to perhaps allow for some of the readers to consider going vegan. And I will certainly put off meat. I think it will take a couple of days for me to go back to eating meat after reading this. So there is also, you have to also take into account how there is so much distance between the consumer and the means of production. So we are completely blind to the abuse animals go through um, before we consume them, which is the whole point basically because we don't want to do the slaughtering ourselves. So I love how the author flipped the script with humans being the animals in this context, and yet most of the humans in the story still saw nothing wrong with what was going on. Nobody ever thought to put a stop to it because they didn't know what was going on behind the scenes. Yet as the reader, we are given the complete context through Marco's eyes. So yeah, this was a very eye-opening and thought-provoking read. I would certainly recommend it, um, but there are certain warnings which aren't listed. So um, yeah, beware of the abuse, uh, beware that this is rather disgusting yet concerning, and it will definitely help you realize how messed up the world can truly really be sometimes and how powerful the government really is if we allow it to be. So anyway, that is all I had to say about Tender is the Flesh. Um, would definitely recommend this one. Uh, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like, comment, share, subscribe, check out the rest of my content. And I'll see you in the next one, hopefully, very, very soon. Bye, guys.